For all of your CNC cutting tool needs, check us out at bitsbits.com. Let's take a second to chat about the bits that I'm going to be using on the first part of this video and that's to make the rail and style or the cope and stick panels. This is the white side 6002. It, it is the OG pattern rail and style set. They do make all kinds of different profiles. Now let's talk about running your stock through the router. Every single operation for the 6002A, the 2B and the raised panel, you're always going to have your show face down on the router when you're running it through. So mark your show faces and remember to always run those facing down. I've removed the 6002B and installed the 6002A and this is going to cut the groove and the profile on the edges of both the rails and the styles. To keep consistent pressure, you're gonna to wanna to use feather boards. What I'm using are Jessam clear cut guides, I believe they're called, that not only puts pressure down, but the wheels are angled at such a way that it keeps the piece pulled up tight against the fence. The desired outcome is this. Perfectly flush, and it's flush on the bottom. This is not raised up, nor is the style raised up on the end. So check it out, guys, we got a perfect door, and one of the most important parts, is the size of it is 12 actually here it's 12 by 18 which is what we set out to to make but now we're going to be installing the largest cutter that i've ever used and this is a raised panel bit that also includes the back cutter and look how large it is here's the rail and style bit in comparison and a quarter inch bit this thing is freaking huge so that means you're going to need to run it slow and you're going to need a powerful router so this is what this bit is going to do for you. Here's a sample router or a sample panel, not router, uh, made out of cherry. As you can see, it put the cove pattern on the front, which is really awesome looking and nice clean cut. But it also does the back cut because remember, this is a three quarter of an inch panel. And if you don't remove waste on the back, you're not going to be able to fit this inside of that quarter inch groove that we cut using the rail and style bit. So if you didn't have a back cutter on it, you would have to do a second operation and cut a rabbit on it using something like a dado stack or another bit here at the router table. So what makes this bit special is that it has the back cutter on it again at the top because remember, everything is face down when you run it through here. You know, like I mentioned a minute ago, I had to move the fence back four to five times to get it even with the bearing on the router bit. This bit is really large, so you need to run your router slow and take your time. You know, another tip that I have for you is if you're running your piece over the bit and it's chattering or it's vibrating pretty crazy, just run it over the bit one more time before moving your fence back and this ensures that you've got the cleanest cut possible and that it removes all of the waste that it's going to instead of missing stuff. And I would be lying if I said that I didn't put the door together just to see what it's gonna look like and I was extremely thrilled with it. You always wanna pre-finish your panels like this before gluing up the door just in case you get seasonal movement, which is a thing. Uh, if for some reason you don't pre-finish it and your panel doesn't get finished on the entire surface, you could see unfinished portions of the panel uh, during the seasonal movement. So I sanded it up to 220 grit. For demoing purposes, I just applied a wiping varnish to the door. So I'm first cleaning and removing the dust using a tack cloth. I ended up putting a total of three coats of the wiping varnish on the panel before gluing the door frame together. Now that the panel is pre-finished, we can go ahead and glue the door together. It's pretty simple. Just put glue on the tenon portion of the rails and assemble the door. I left the panel in the clamps for probably two to three hours for the glue to dry. After the glue dried, I can sand the frame up to the same 220 grit. 
And you'll actually notice that I ended up sanding the center of the raised panel because I accidentally scuffed it. It's not a big deal. Just sand the surface with your 220 grit and prep it for the same varnish that you're going to be putting on the rest of the door. Two or three coats later and your door is done.